What's up, YouTube? It, Joshua here, also, aka the Lightning GFX, and I'm going to be showing you how I do my um, text for my YouTube backgrounds that I make for free. And um, yeah, so basically, I get a um, this uh, light Lightroom, and it's already got all the layers of text set up, which is quite handy. And I don't really worry about um, what colors or textures or wh what whatever really I use in Cinema 4D um, due to the fact that it's my my computer is bullshit slow with one core CPU but that's not really the point anyway I, I change all the um, colors and everything in Photoshop since it's much easier and quicker for me and I don't have to muck around um, changing all the stuff so basically I mindlessly uh, select all the text and then type in up what I want so I might as well make a new background for myself because I've been meaning to do make one and obviously this one has a default um, horizontal spacing at uh, negative 10 I want to change that to 0 not O and yes my computer is lagging out right now because it's hopeless as I said and um, because I can kind of see the lights up there I will drop down the size but I will just zoom in to the text which will um, yeah uh, d just help and uh, then what I would normally do, oh, I'd obviously change the font but I can't be bothered I would have to load up 3,000 3, fonts and that would just be a pain in the ass, It'd take a minute and um, basically I go to plugins through LC I'd norm you'd think you'd go there, but actually you just go to Thrasy, and then I'd put in uh, the number of pieces between like, uh, or from lazy maybe five, but not really. I'd usually do ten or twenty, or twenty not twelve, and then I'd just hit break now with making sure I have all of them selected, and then that'll take um, about five minutes or so, depending on how many um, slices you have it has to do on each individual one because obviously it'll take longer if this is, there's more um, uh, writing in the thing and then so I've already um, done that for this guy I'm actually making a background right now so what I'll do is I'll make like a whole bunch of uh, like cracks for each individual letter or whatever like each little part there's, as you can see it goes back 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 like there's all these text in front of each other and for some reason it makes like a whole part of these random like white plain uh, materials and stuff uh, yeah whatever but anyway I just uh, put, go to MoGraph Poly FX you, there's obviously many ways of doing this I'm pretty sure like I don't know but this is how I do it because an easy way and I'm just used to it then I select all of them hold it down, like left click, or drag up and make sure it has a down arrow click on it and as you'll see it will move the lines to be in line with that then I go to MoGraph Effector Random pull, you can like go all the way down there but I don't do that anymore, you just put it make sure it's got the arrow to the left where it will pop in to Poly FX as well and this is where it's important, you go to Random Deformer and change this to point, that must happen well I think you could do something else but I always put it at point and as you'll see in a couple seconds or two this here would just go Bleh, like that, man that would not <laughs> really be a good background so what you need to do is go to effector and you drop that down to like re a lot just like down to like one, two, three or four percent and yeah, see that's a bit too much since it's a big text, not like not many that not many that not many um characters or whatever and so I'd drop this down to like one or two. Just let it load. So that 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 could work, but I kinda wanna make it um more nice and readable kind of thing. So I dropped that down to one. I guess you could change the seed if you want it to be slightly different. Say you didn't like this rough patch or that rough patch. You could just go up or down or just type in a random number. Doesn't really matter. As you can see that 
uh, maybe you can't see, but it's slightly changed. If I just go blah 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 blah, it should. I don't know. It, I might have to like. I don't know. Yeah. See, as you can see, it, it did change like the indentations and whether it pops out or in or something. It's slightly changed. So if it's not looking as good, you can always change it in Photoshop or just change the seed or re-slice it up. I don't know. And basically, I would render it out now. So I'd go to render settings. Normally, people would do ambient occlusion and ambient uh, isolation or whatever. Anyway, normally people would put these two, but I can't be bothered. And to me, I just put like I don't really know exactly what they do, but they add a little bit to it. And I'm pretty sure and stuff like that. But I'm kind of lazy as they're free backgrounds, and um, I, yeah, and. I like to watch YouTube myself, so I don't spend all my life making YouTube, uh, whatever. So I'd normally just change the save, make sure it's a ping, and make sure that alpha channel is fixed. Because if you um, don't have the alpha channel, you'll you'll render it out with this black patch, and it will not be good. It would be like using the quick selection tool, the magic wand or whatever, and like there'll still be like weird black edges. On, on your text or you'll cut away some of it especially if it's all chaotic and bumpy like like this one here is so make sure you have it on ping and on alpha channel I think you can do straight alpha but I just leave it unchecked as I don't th uh, it works without it and um, if you have a good computer tick those two cell render is to make it like black and white or something if you want it to go behind it or something like that I don't know and uh, yeah, so I guess I could render this out and well pause it and render it out and show um, the end result. Uh, I guess yeah. Um, so make sure you have those settings. Um, what else do I need to say? Yeah, so just remember the vector and the deformer and. Yeah, that's pretty much it actually. So I'll just render this out. So I'll pause the recording and just wait until it's done. Oh. Okay, that normally wouldn't happen. Oh, I think I know. Oh, that's right. I didn't um, choose the save location. Well, properly, I guess. So I just go to here. Oh my god, what a glitch out on this gay computer. Come on. Okay, there we go. Now I just render it out. Oh my god. Just piss off. Piss off. Okay. Yeah, so it will start rendering out now. At the moment it's preparing. Because I'm recording it slowing it down. So I'm just going to pause it. So, yeah. Oh, um... I don't know if you, like, as you can see, I've got a real shitty computer, and you may be wondering why I have so many squares rendering it out. Well, you all you need to go is to, um, I think, Edit, Preferences, uh, hurry up, and then you go to Renderer, and then you do Custom Number of Render Threads, and then I just put mine on 10 or something. But beware, if you have it like on 1, it will, the squares will be much be bigger than if you have it on, say, 10. Just some, keep that in mind. So it's not going to like render it out faster. It, but it can be useful if, if you want it to like render out um, like like a whole, a, just like random parts. Like you want to see a little random bit there, there, and there or something. Say you're modeling something and you just want to see roughly what it'll look like so you might stop it now because you kind of know what it's going to be like but if you have like one giant square you're not getting much information on what it's going to be like if you're rendering out uh, using that one the quick render button I guess yeah so if I change it now it wouldn't really work because it has to finish rendering it before it changes the amount of squares but yeah just keep that in mind if you want to change it yeah so I'm just going to go pause it again okay um it's pretty much uh, fully rendered, but 
for some reason, it could be because I'm using um, Cinema R12, I'm going to get R13 uh, soon, um, but for some reason near the end of the render, um, when like it's down to the, like, the last rendering squares, um, it kind of freezes, but it will slowly like render out each square, just like goes into super slow mode, I don't really know. Yeah, because I'm recording and it's using less CPU for the cinema, but like, it just takes an awfully long time. Like, if we look at this one here, it's pretty much al al almost done, but it'll like end soon. So, if you know <laughs> why this is, please let me know because then I'd be able to render out cinema quite well, faster and stuff, not having to wait for this stupid ass glitch because really it only took like five minutes. But like this here, these random ass squares will take like at, at least another 10 depending if I'm rendering out in the background. But yeah, so that's pretty much what you'll get as an end result. And I just have a Cinema 4D folder with all the stuff I do. And like here's a recent one I've made which I'm going to be making a background soon. And um, yeah, so if you got the ping, you should have a white background. So if you enabled ping with the alpha channel, it should turn out with this. And you won't have, like, you'll know that you won't have a white background because you won't see it like a hard white uh, piece of paper type thing there. And then it changes to the pattern, which is to be like that, which is what you want. And then I change the color with, uh, like, hue and saturation and stuff. And yeah, that'll be another tutorial. I'll do the um, Photoshop part uh, later. By the this, by the way, this is my f like first tutorial, so please um, uh, tell me what I need to improve on, or what's good about it, or whatever you feel like doing. And remember to like the video. And if you can hear it, I kind of doubt it though, but it's actually raining outside. If you're wondering if there's a random noise in the background that I, that I don't realize I'm recording which is the rain, but yeah, so if you don't, um, uh, put the, the, yeah, the ping, it will render out like that, which you don't want, because then you'll be using Photoshop to get rid of it, and it's just, it's, it, you can get rid of it really well with Photoshop, it's just like, it'll take too much time, so, uh, or it won't turn out good, so make sure you, it'll look like you're rendering of the black, um, here, but, when you it's in the file which you can quickly access by going show file folder or whatever explorer yeah um yeah yeah I'm not really uh, I haven't done a tutorial before so this may be a shitty tutorial but I'm basically just showing you how I make the cinema 4D text because I don't often make a speed out of it because I'm basically doing the exact th same thing every time but just changing the font and uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then I'll be uh, spending about 30 minutes making a YouTube background. So really I just do this while I'm Skyping someone or watching a video and render that out in the background and stuff or do my homework, I don't know. But yeah, Cinema 4D will usually take a long time to do, especially when you have like Amity and seclusion or whatever um, on as well. This was actually a quick render because of... Um, I didn't include those, but it will add to it and make it a lot better, but I just put curves on and stuff like that, so, yeah, this is, I kind of dragged it out an extra two minutes or so, but, um, hope you enjoyed, and peace!